Hello, it's the snowman again, and I've been very busy with the Jack Phoenix project, but I wanted to take a break and tell you the top 10 items you need to stockpile right now. Now, whether you think there's going to be some kind of an economic meltdown or not, see, the thing is, nature doesn't care who's in control of the government. So Sandy came along. We're 11 days past Sandy as we do this, and there are still people without food, water, and electricity. So you need to be ready for any circumstance like that, and I'm going to tell you what you can do today to be ready for tomorrow. Okay, the number one thing you have to have in an emergency is water and non-perishable food. Make sure you've got that ready, okay? This means that you're going to stock up actual containers filled with water that you can drink in an emergency. So, gallon size is fine. You can buy the big, uh, like, five-gallon jugs of water. But in addition to actually storing water, you also need to have a filter system. I like this one. This is the Sport Berkey bottle. And go to the blog. I've got links to it, and you can check it out and uh, find out everything you need to know. You can even save by buying three of them as if there's more than one of you in the family. So, you need to buy one of these that has a filter in it because you can just be walking along outside and find some water in a ditch, fill this thing up, and it filters through this, and you can drink it as long as it's not contaminated with pesticides or gasoline or some such thing. So like, I'm pretty confident that the water supply where I am is good. I can go to the pond or a creek and fill up, and I'm good to go. I can also take a five gallon bucket and take it up to the pond, and Berkey makes a larger system that you can fill the water and you'll filter several gallons of water a day in it, not just a little bottle that you carry with you, but a supply of water for the house that's filtered as you go. Food, you need canned food like this. Uh, we got salmon, we've got beans, we've got tuna, and those items are important because you can eat this even if you can't cook. So if you don't have gas or electricity, no means to cook your food, you can still eat food that's pretty tasty. All right, now, you can can stuff yourself. This is beef stew that we canned, and it's so simple. It's just meat, potatoes, carrots, onions, salt, and water. Dry goods is really a great way to go, but you have to have water, and you have to have the means to heat it and cook it. So if you have those means, use your dry goods. Add a little beef broth for flavoring. Keep salt on hand as well, all right? so. Number one, food and water. Flashlights and spare batteries. These run on ordinary AA batteries. Uh, I recommend for an emergency, something that you can easily replace the batteries, okay? So weird batteries that'll be hard to find and might not be top choice for your emergency stock, but you always have to have light. Candles and matches. You gotta have these, have a bunch of matches. Have a lot of matches, okay? And alternate ways of lighting things. So, I also have a lighter and a striker. Woo. Here's what's good about a, a candle. A candle, one flame in a room, will light up the entire room just enough to keep you from tripping over things so you can see where you're going. You might not be able to read unless you're right by the candle, but, you know, your whole existence is not gonna be reading. And one candle will burn a long time, especially this thing, clothes and blankets. Not just whatever clothes you've got. I mean, everybody's got spare clothes, right? But you need to have clothes in a specific place that's protected from the elements. So if a flood comes through, you've still got a place where you can go get dry clothes. So I keep mine in my new bug out bag. This is the Eberly stock. I got this for the Jack Phoenix project. Eberly stock was nice enough to send us one. Uh, for product placement, and I'll tell you about it in another video. Okay, main thing we're talking about here is clothes. So let me show you what I've got. This is a dry compression sack from Outdoor Research, and I keep my clothes in this. I've got wool socks, wool hat, uh, gloves, uh, spare pants, underwear, uh, scarf, that kind of thing, okay? So just pick what you need based on your climate or whatever you're preparing for, and then put it in one of these dry compression sacks. Go to the blog, I'll have a link to this specific item. It's a good one. You also need blankets. Go to Goodwill on half off day and buy a bunch of wool blankets. Wool is good because it will keep you warm even when it's damp. So these people up there suffering after Sandy, they're wet, cold, 
it's a miserable climate in the winter and if you've got wool it'll keep you warm even though it gets damp okay you need a stove a stove is going to provide heat and a means to cook now what kind of stove you use that's entirely up to you propane coleman fuel okay whatever where i live if i lose power i can i can cook in a fireplace or outside okay so i like to have something i can use with wood this thing's really good this is a solo camp stove and uh Jack Phoenix did a video of this on uh, Doomsday Survival Skills. So I'll post a link to that to the blog, or you can click here on YouTube. All right, so this is the Solo Stove. Great company, check them out. The point about the other kind of stove, like a, like a Coleman Fuel or propane stove, you gotta be able to cook food now and then, at least for morale. You need an alternate source of heat. Okay, that could be a space heater, a kerosene heater, a little propane heater, who knows? But depending on where you live, you might have a fireplace or a wood stove, all right? That's a great way to keep warm, so that's what I use out here. Another very important item to have is something you can barter. So that would be liquor, coffee, and cigarettes. Even if you don't drink liquor or coffee, and if you don't smoke, those are valuable commodities uh, when you have a disaster like Sandy or whatever. Okay, so this is brandy, but you can get the cheap stuff, man. Everclear is fine, and you can use that as a disinfectant, and you can use it uh, for making like tinctures and things like that if you're into that. Uh, get your vitamins, right? So, get liquor, coffee. Man, you don't know how valuable coffee can be for bartering until you need it. And cigarettes. I don't even have any. I've got a pipe and I've got some pipe tobacco. I don't have cigarettes, but any combination of these items will do. You need guns and ammo, okay? 22 rifle is good. A 45 caliber semi-automatic handgun is a good choice. And you need ammo. You need a medical kit, okay? You can buy these online and then uh, <laughs> doctor them up, right? So I've added a suture kit and some other stuff. Listen. If you have prescription medication that you have to take, go to your doctor and tell him that you need to stock up a month's supply, extra or whatever, I don't know, uh, so that you can have some in emergencies. Even if you're not taking medication regularly, you might want to have something for severe pain, injuries, broken bones, that kind of thing. Anything that's gonna be controlled or otherwise require a prescription, like antibiotics would be a very good choice to stock up on. Just go tell your doctor what you want it for. Go to the blog and I'll have a list of items that I think you need to get a prescription for from your doctor. And if that doctor won't do it for you, then find one in the family or a friend or neighbor and make him your doctor. And develop a relationship where he can trust you and he knows that you're not going to abuse it and then he'll write you a prescription. Okay, Very important to have medication in an emergency. You need to have a basic toolkit that belongs with your emergency gear, okay? This is going to be separate from the tools that you have in your drawer or your uh, car or whatever, okay? Because you never know where those things are going to be. You need an emergency toolkit that stays there until the emergency. Here's a few basic items. Definitely add to it, okay? A Swiss Army knife, a regular survival knife. This is a Mora. Highly recommend this. It's only 11 bucks on Amazon if you buy two of them. Screwdrivers, hammer, pry bar, duct tape, and glue. All right, basic items in the kit. One other thing not shown here, rope. Get rope, string, uh, any kind of twine, and put that in your kit. I've got plenty of it, it's just not here. All right, so that's 10, right? I'm gonna go ahead and give you uh, few more bonus items that you could uh, add to your stuff. I mean, there's no reason to ever stop, right? Unless you just run out of room or you get bored with it. And these 10 items that I've told you, I mean, you could substitute whatever, depending on your circumstances. It's gonna vary based on your climate, whether you live in the city or in the country or the suburbs. I mean, it's entirely up to you. But those items are things that I think are very important to have. Here's a few bonus items. Toiletries, very good for morale, okay? So you need toothpaste, toothbrush, uh, floss, and shampoo. Toilet paper, man, I cannot tell you how valuable toilet paper is going to be when you don't have it. Another thing you ought to have, in case you find yourself with a lot of time on your hands, be sure you've got some books to kill the time, some old magazines, I mean, who knows. 
um, Bible. I mean, you can read that thing for your whole life and still not get everything out of it that's in it. So that's a good one to have. Whatever. It's just whatever you'd be interested in. A survival handbook is very important to have in a situation like this. So while we're on the topic of books, I mean, there could come a time when you decide you've got to bail. All right, you're living in the city and FEMA is just not bringing the food and water and it's freezing and you've got to get out of Dodge. All right, so how are you gonna do that? I recommend this handbook, the survival handbook from DK. If you've got to get out of Dodge and you wanna have this book in your supplies and read up before you go, maybe take it with you. All right, one more really important item to have in your emergency supplies, storage bags. Okay, if you're wandering around in town and you find some canned goods lying in the street or in an alley, all right, you're gonna be carrying them around like this and everybody see what you've got? Or do you wanna put them in a garbage bag or a grocery bag and haul them back? All right, the thing about this is that you don't have to have a backpack with you at all times. You might not have a backpack with you, all right? But this, you can, you can stuff all this in one pocket and then have a container if you need it. Also, these little uh, zipper bags are good for, you know, if you pick up batteries or if you find some nails or screws or anything like that that you wanna carry around, put it in a zippy bag. Here's something else that's useful. Just these little sandwich bags. So have a bunch of containers like this. Garbage bag, grocery bag, sandwich bag, and zipper bags. Okay, listen, there's a lot of stuff out there that you might need. If you think of anything else that people ought to have in their top 10 list of items to stockpile, put it in the blog or comment on YouTube, okay? That helps everybody. And be sure and check out the blog because I've got a lot more info there about what to stockpile in an emergency with links to other articles and videos I've done on the topic. All right, I hope you've enjoyed the show and I will see you next time.